Well, welcome back, uh, George, to uh, another interview. We're so grateful uh, that you are able to do this for us. Uh, uh, Dr. George Rutherford is a professor of epidemiology at UCSF and uh, also a parishioner at St. John's, and we're grateful that you're back. Thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot, Scott. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. So we want to focus this time on uh, churches. But before we get into that, um, what does the next year look like? We've heard a lot about the flu season coming, uh, the winter coming. There's talk of a vaccine. Uh, how do you, what does the year look like? You've been so good at uh, the last time we, we spoke, you nailed it. Everything you said came true. Uh, and uh, do you see any light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, what, what's it look like for the next half a year? Oh, you started off with a year. I got to give you good news. Next half year is not good news. It's going to get worse. Um, and then by hopefully by December, maybe January, maybe February, we'll start getting vaccine and we'll be able to uh, start to vaccinate people. There's a whole question about who gets vaccinated first, um, uh, given that vaccine where there's not going to be enough to go around. Um, you know, some people say it should be nursing home residents and their, and their attendants. Um, you know, the federal government's going to want to immunize every member of the armed forces and all the police uh, first. Um, you know, the other people you know, will say, well, let's try and immunize the people who are at, at, um, at the greatest risk of spreading it, which would be in California, would be people living in low-income Latino neighborhoods like in Fruitvale and the Mission and the Canal District of San Rafael. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to look at this, and um, we'll see. But from now until um, uh, till that starts to happen, um, things will, case counts will continue to go up, especially, you know, since we're blessed with such great leadership by like the people like the governor of Florida and the lieutenant governor of Texas who, you know, it's, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be sarcastic here. Um, you know, I mean, we've had less than stellar leadership in many parts of the country. California is a little different, but still, I don't know if people saw the, picture in the New York Times today from Huntington Beach, you know, jam, pa jam pack walking up and down the, uh, the seawall on Huntington Beach, you know, three people out of probably 60 in the shot had on masks. So, you know, I mean, we got a lot of a long ways to go in California uh, as, as well. Um, for now, um, I think we can expect there to be continuing cases. There'll be increasing mortality. Uh, through the end of December. We've gotten better with managing people um, medically uh, who are sick enough to go in the hospitals. Um, so remdesivir and dexamethasone provide a little bit of a bump, you know, are, are helpful. Um, and the, the main thing actually is, is, um, is how we ventilate uh, people, not ventilate, how we give them oxygen. You put them on their stomachs. Um, it's a lot, the work of breathing is a lot less. And um, you, you can uh, get people through the acute illness without having to be intubated, without having to be put on a, on a ventilator. So that's all kind of good news. Our, our ICU mortality at UCSF has gone down to about 10%, uh, which is, you know, was, as in Italy, it was as high as 80% originally. Um, so that's kind of how much we've learned about patient management. But you don't want to be there, right? You don't want to get to that point. You want to be in the point where you can wear your mask and you just avoid an infection. Right. Now, so, when the vaccine comes, presuming it's, it works, and there are good two or three good vaccines, there are probably some really good ones from China, but we, of course, won't buy them. Um, you know, it'll take a long time to get 40 million people immunized in California. The One of them actually has to have two doses, uh, the Moderna vaccine, the messenger RNA vaccine. So, you know, that's going to be a that's going to be a big slog through the winter and spring next year. So, as you know, uh, you know the, the diocese, uh, churches, uh, uh, some churches are are you know ignoring these health concerns. Uh, uh, what what would be necessary for you, from your perspective, uh, before considering it safe to regather as a, a church, and what does that and if, if that happens, what do the initial regatherings look like with no communion, no singing, as I say, no preaching, maybe? 
Oh yeah, just like in high school. Um, um, okay, outside, um, few people, way, widely spaced out, no singing. You could preach and you can preach all you want, but amplify it. Um, what else? It's communion tough, um, unless it's some sort of self-serve deal. Um, masks, um, nobody over 65. And, uh, you know, that's what the, uh, uh, that's what the archdiocese, Catholic archdiocese did in San Francisco. Uh, then they tried to get a little too fancy and they got a restraining order from the, from the district attorney's office. So you probably want to avoid that, uh, that, that happening. Um, but, you know, that's what you're talking about. Uh, so mm -hmm. all of a sudden that big parking lot looks pretty good, right? Or the yeah. playground at the school. That's what we're talking about, right? It's not going to be going back inside um, is is a very bad idea, and going back inside and singing is a, is an exponentially bad idea. Right. Okay. I, I hate to say it, you know, that's my favorite part. Not, you know, yeah. I, I'm sorry, the preaching is my favorite part, but yeah. singing comes in a close second. Yeah. I'll have to owe you for that. <laughs> um, and then, so what? As far as uh, there's been a lot of conversation about uh, uh, what we sh special considerations there should be for children, uh, and obviously the b debate is raging about schools and and what that means. What's your perspective on that? Uh, my perspective is it's it's you know for whatever reason, younger children, meaning under ten, and there's actually some physiologic reasons for this as well do not seem to get infected at nearly the, the rate adults do. And if they're infected, don't seem to transmit at nearly the rate adults do. Part of this is, is, they're, um, is that they have fewer of the receptors that the, uh, that the virus binds to. So they're, you know, so as they ch make new viruses, they, they make them at lower levels. That may be one thing. Uh, you know, the other thing is that they're sort of thigh high. So it's hard to breathe or cough into your face, you know, if you're an adult, if they're kind of at your waist. Um, just from how tall they are. And, um, but I, I think that's sort of an overly physical way of thinking about it. I think the physiology is, is that they're just less infectious and less likely to become infected. So I've actually thought, you know, if you're going to go back to school, you know, you, 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 the easiest place to start is K through three or K through four. Uh, by the time they get to 10, the, the receptors start to grow up. They start to get more of these receptors and um, they start to behave more like Adults, and by the time they're in middle school, we have documented large outbreaks in places like Israel and then a bunch of high school outbreaks, Australia, France, Israel, um, that have, um, you know, you just can't, you know, it's just not, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. And you'd have to be really, really, really careful about, um, about old, about adolescence, anything from sort of pre-adolescent out. Okay, let me cut to the chase with the, the question many at St. John's would be asking. When would you advise that it was safe for someone over 65 to go back to church and worship inside? Uh, I thought you were going to ask me about when to get a haircut. Um, uh, um, when they get a vaccine. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah, so you're you're, you're looking at uh, next year. Well, they may get vaccinated first, right? Okay. I mean, that's one whole school of thought that should be people over sixty-five who get vaccinated first. Okay. Well, this is very helpful. Ultimately, I'm sorry, but that's the you know. Yeah. No, I, I think generally the uh, people are un understanding that that's where this is all going, uh, in terms of having to continue with a lot of online effort at the church to prioritize people's safety. And uh, we certainly believe in science. Oh, really? <laughs> so okay. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, George. This is very helpful. And uh, uh, we appreciate you taking the time once again to be with us. I was just going to tell you, I mean, the reason there are reasons we do this. Um, when we originally, when the original projections were made, there the projected number of deaths in the United States was between 1.7 and 2.2 million deaths. So in a typical year, 
the number of deaths is 2.56 uh, 2 million in the United States. So you're talking about basically doubling the mortality in, in the US. What we've, um, what we've managed to do by sheltering in place is to push that way down. So 1.7 to 2.2 million is somewhere between 34 and 44,000 deaths in the Bay Area alone. Bay Area alone, right? Right now it's 707. Okay, that's how much, that's, that's what the benefit of this is. Uh, and would it have always, you know, and without that, without sheltering in place, I don't know that it had gotten that high, but it would have gotten really, really, really high. Um, and we're seeing that kind of mortality in other parts of the state and now increasingly across the whole, uh, the whole country much higher levels, but that's the benefit of this, right? And that's not, it's not just the elderly, it's not just those with underlying conditions, it's not just those who would have died this year anyway. In fact, it's quite the contrary. Um, uh, the other thing is, is that there's, um, we're probably doing, I, you know, I think by wearing masks, which is the one thing, the one thing to take away from this is to wear masks. Uh, masks are hugely protective. And they're protective not only of you as an individual, but of everyone around you. In fact, the, la the latter is even more important. And the other thing is that masks do, is it not just cuts down um, people getting infected from a direct inoculation of the virus, but if they do get infected, they're gonna get infected with fewer viral particles. And so their disease will be milder. And there's some interpretation that that's why we see such a low mortality rate here in the West where people actually wear masks, I mean, not all the West, obviously, but in California where people actually wear masks, it's because they're getting lower inocula um, because people are, because of the mask. Now in Southern California, the basket case, just forget about it. But here in Northern California, I think you can sort of point with, uh, point with pride. Wearing a mask is a perfect example of loving your neighbor as you love yourself. I'll save that one up, Scott. Thanks. <laughs> well, thank you again, George, for taking the time to be with us. And uh, this has been very helpful and it will be the uh, catalyst for a lot of good conversation as we, uh, as we show this interview uh, to uh, groups of parishioners at St. John's. So thank you again. My pleasure. Anytime, Scott. Happy to help. Take care. Okay.